Uh, Coach Witherspoon been stuck on that 299 for a little bit, trying to get it off his back and get to that 300 mark. St. Peter's will control off the opening tip. Latrell Reed had a little bit of a, a finger issue on Friday night against Fairfield. Out there with his fingers taped up. Here's Washington off the feed from Roberts. Really good Princeton action there for St. Peter's. What a great back screen by Bland on that weak side. I thought Washington was going to catch it and dunk it, but a nice job of gathering himself for that layup. Plus he gives. This is Frank Mitchell. It's stolen by Ziegler from behind. Off to the races. Reed, his pass rejected. Saved in bounds by Canisius. And St. Peter's will retain on the possession. And we got to blow it dead just to get the shot clock reset to where it needs to be. I think it either did inadvertently reset or it didn't. It, yeah, it didn't reset. So it's going to be 25 on the shot clock for the Peacocks. A uh, signal, a, a change of possession there. Boy, you see just how how much St. Peter's wants to get out on the break and run. Canisius has to do a good job in their transition defense today. Troll Reed one-on-one -on -one with Pelesi, the sophomore from Wisconsin. Starting his fourth straight game, Bland out for a Washington three-pointer. Well, TJ Gadsden got the rebound. Well, Washington really wants them to attack the basket more than shoot those long-range threes. That's a new addition to his game this year. Starting to shoot a little bit more, but hey, his, his best stuff is all around the rim. Played well off the dump to Pelesi. Pulls up from 10. No good. And Mitchell, the offensive rebound. Backing Roberts down inside. Good turnaround, baby. Hook, but couldn't get the roll. Now, well, Stefan Roberts, that's a that's a huge matchup today guarding Frank Mitchell. We're going to watch that. Rhythm three, it's Washington too strong. Now, Corey Washington is really, really getting comfortable, though, on the offensive end. Trey Dinkins, no good. The tip-in was no good as well. Mitchell had it ripped free from his hands by Brent Bland. Bland, nice job on the defensive glass. Washington... You know, earlier in the season, Joe, I'm sure he wouldn't have come out of the gate shooting threes. That's how much his game has progressed offensively. And didn't attempt any three-pointers last year. This year, Washington, 34% for beyond the arc. Lost the handle off the drive that time, and Fritz gets the loose ball. Pelesi looking for Canisius' first points. No good on the three. Boy, tough offensive start for the Griffins. Yeah, just struggling to get in any sort of a rhythm. And Washington, again, in that last possession for St. Peter's, really trying to make things happen offensively. Fritz denied the pass for Washington. Reed off the drive, gets fouled and won. You know, and I think that when, when all the eyes go to Corey Washington, people tend to forget about how good Latrell Reed is offensively. And off the bounce, you see him, you know, able to explode past Pelesi, really gets his head and shoulders by his top foot able to get to the glass for the layup. That's just part of what's made Latrell Reed have this kind of breakout season that he's been enjoying for St. Peter's. 11 and a half points, four rebounds, four and a half assists a game. Really taking charge here in Jersey City. And then he commits a foul on Trey Dinkins who is driving and trying to go up. And so that'll send Canisius to the free throw line for the first time today. Two players, uh, Dinkins and Reed, each wearing uh, the number zero for their respective teams. And very similar, like to, like to really go at players and, and attack the basket. Dinkins really showed a lot of fortitude in that last trip. Really strong move to the glass. Dinkins, one of the best free throw shooters in the MAC at 84% this year. Was supposed to be the backup point guard for Canisius this year as Taj Tabeski, a preseason second team all MAC selection, started the first two games, then got hurt in their St. Bonaventure game and has been, he's been out, he's been called week to week now since early November. But Dinkins had to take over and has really run with that role. 
Washington buries the corner three. Well, third time was the charm for Corey Washington with three balls. But I love the way he is just so in rhythm and comfortable on the offensive end for St. Peter's. Dinkins pump fake, drives, dishes off. Mitchell couldn't handle it. Peacock's defense able to reset. Mitchell finds Dinkins driving, and he's fouled again. Well, Dinkins really with great eyes finding Mitchell on that great high-low look. Mitchell just kind of not ready for the pass. If he would have caught it, it would have been an easy lay-in. But Dinkins, back-to-back -back possessions for Canisius, very aggressive. And as we talked about, Joe, like he needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, with all these players due to injury that the Griffs are missing, this is a guy that's got to step his game up, both finding players, making other players better, and scoring himself. Mohamed's so going to come in for Stefan Roberts, who just committed that foul. Also, Roy Clark off the bench. Clark has been putting together a really nice stretch lately for St. Peter's, averaging nine points a game in his last five coming off the bench. And, you know, when teams get on those nice winning streaks, it's not just the starting five, you know, supporting cast players have to contribute. And a guy like uh, Clark is able to do that off the bench. A little bit of a reunion on Friday night for Roy Clark, his former head coach at St. Francis Brooklyn, Glenn Bryken, now an assistant at Fairfields. They got to, to go up against each other for the first time. Boy, that was a great defensive possession for the Griffs. In the passing lanes, putting a lot of on-the-ball pressure, really not allowing St. Peter's to get into any sort of flow. That was one of the first trips so far offensively where St. Peter's was really not in any sort of rhythm. And you almost have to definitely believe that Coach Witherspoon whispered into Trey Dinkins' ear about taking advantage offensively. And it's a perfect time for that to start to happen as you see Washington with another outside jump shot. Our goal team's starting to find a rhythm offensively about five minutes in. Bryce Okpo gives it up for TJ Gadstein. No good on the three-pointer, but Dinkins the offensive rebound. Here's Mitchell backing Muhammad so down inside, using his body, and Mitchell gets the roll. Boy, that is a big man, Frank Mitchell, mm -hmm. and he just willed himself down, down the block and, and to the front of the rim, and that's a tough card mm -hmm. for So. That is just old school post offense. I'm going to back it down and score. Two point game. Bland off the drive. Little hesitation move that didn't get the roll. Gadsden in the rebound. Canisius trying to go in front for the first time today. Dinkins, rush three, fading away, no good. And St. Peter's gets the miss. Griffs have numbers defensively. Washington, nice move. That's, Nine. I'm sorry, Joe. Great individual effort by Washington on the baseline. Leaned in the Palessi and then was just able to go up and under for that layup. Alessi, mid-range J, no good. Bland the rebound, looks to run. Bland stripped to the ball by Akpo, but he was fouled. And again, run, baby, run. Bland to the free throw line, drew a foul on a fast break, and it's a 
hitting the first. He's got a three-pointer today. St. Peter's two of four from beyond the arc. Canisius has been, you know, to your point, JR, it's one of the best three-point defending teams, not only in the MAC, but in the in the country this year. They're 46th in three-point field goal defense out of 362 Division I teams. Well, I mean, everybody's shooting it. You have to defend it. Williams, no good. Now it's Devin Williams. Just checked in for Canisius. Clark. Extra pass. Bland for three. You bet. Well, Latrell Reed, you said it perfectly. Made the extra pass to a wide open Brent Bland who knocked down the wide open three ball. And there we just talked about defending that perimeter. Peacock seven for 10 for the floor to start the game. Up by nine on the Griffins. Here's Mitchell blocked by So. And then throws it off Muhammad out of bounds. It'll stay with the Golden Griffins, but boy, whether it's been Muhammad So or Stefan Roberts to start the game, JR, they've really done a nice job containing Frank Mitchell in these first seven and a half minutes. Well, and they're meeting his physicality with physicality of their own, and we see an offensive foul. And then Mitchell walked over Blent Bland on the way back down the court. Things getting uh, a little bit uh, tense early on today. Reggie Witherspoon has got it. Frank Mitchell kind of over, and he's talking to him along with one of his assistants and one of our officials today just to, to try to send, send the, uh, the temperature down a little bit here. Well, and I think you said it correctly. You know, I think that Mitchell has been feeling that physicality from Robertson so maybe not liking it mm -hmm. and got a little frustrated. Peacocks by nine. Here's Reed. Trying to get around Dinkins. Offensive foul. Well, Reed gets called for kind of hooking yeah, kind of hooking his arm as he was attempting to go to the basket and, and was good defense by the Griffs. And you see it, you know, here we are just about eight minutes gone by in the first half and both of these teams realizing the importance of this conference game and you see it with how physical both teams are playing. Yeah, Kadishis lost their last two games. They're one and six in their last seven since early December after they got off to a... Just a great start this year. They were kind of the the net darlings of the MAC. They were up near the top in the, the first couple of net rankings that came out, but it's been rough for them over the last you know, month and a half now. Williams sends it inside. Akpo at the buzzer. A uh, great pass by Williams. Patient was able to turn the corner a little bit, and then find a wide open Akpo for the jumper. Get it to Washington. Leads the way with nine points already today. Foul called away from the basketball. Going to be Devin Williams for Canisius, who picks it up, a sophomore from Los Angeles. Peacocks will get a chance to draw something up. Just now, Bashir Mason and Reggie Witherspoon. Elijah Perkins is checked in for St. Peter's out of the timeout. Here's Washington, pump fake, bucket good, and a foul for Corey Washington. And Canisius came out of that timeout playing 1-2-2 two, two zone. St. Peter's read it really nicely, moved the basketball effectively, found Washington in the short corner and was able to navigate the baseline for the layup. Good recognition. And you know, that starts with guys like Brent Bland and Latrell Reed. Washington able to hit the free throw. He's got a dozen. Just continuing what's been a great run for Corey Washington in the month of January. St. Peter's leads by 10. Largest lead of the game. 
Dinkins gave it up to Pelesi. Now Williams. Mitchell's check back in. Dinkins off the screen for three, no good. Ziegler the rebound. Nice job defensively by St. Peter's, not allowing any type of inside penetration off the dribble or pass. Nice crossover by Clark, the drive, the reverse, no. Rebound on the ground, Dinkins, but a Mitchell fighting, and it's out of bounds, still no indication. Now Kadisha's basketball. Uh, Elijah Perkins went flying through the lane trying to get that rebound. You see Clark, really nice attempt for the reverse layup, just misses it, but there goes Perkins diving, trying to get that loose ball, and it'll eventually right there go off of so out of bounds. That was close. That was really close. A great angle on that replay. Akpo blocked by So. Boy, Mohamed So coming off the bench. Already a couple blocks. Making his impact felt defensively. Ziegler finishes on the other side. Timeout, Canisius. St. Peter's really trying to attack the glass here in the first half of the first. Strong wins together. They're playing like it. And guys coming off the bench, there's no drop off. They come in and it's, you know, they keep it moving. It's exactly what you want to see out of a team when they take their first loss in a while. They have a long winning streak that gets broken. Foul going to go against Corey Washington here. It'll be his first and the team's fourth. Also doing a lot of this with Latrell Reed on the bench with two fouls. But after a long losing streak gets broken, you your biggest thing is you, you want to make sure that it doesn't snowball and become a three or four game losing streak. You want to come out and make a statement and all intents and purposes, they have. Yeah. They are are not taking this Canisius team for granted in any way, shape, or form. They are just really pedaled to the metal here in the first half. Mitchell gets the rebound off the missed shot and then gets fouled after a couple of pump fakes. Eventually got somebody to bite and land down on him. Foul on Elijah Perkins. It's number five on St. Peter's. Kanisha says five against them as well. Mitchell operating in space. Good ball movement. Williams able to finish at the rack. Well, Ziegler kind of gave him the baseline. Didn't want him to turn back into the middle of the floor. Williams is a traditional left-handed player, but he did a nice job attacking the baseline side and finishing. That's tough for a lefty to finish on that right baseline, and Williams gets the steal. Off to the races. No, Mitchell's tip-in didn't go either. And that's really good hustle by Muhammad So. The big man running the floor, just doing enough to kind of distract the, the layup attempt and, and able to get the rebound. Ziegler off the screen and switch, drives in on Mitchell, high off the glass, no. So the offensive rebound. Lost it. And eventually grabbed by Canisius. Williams caught in tight and able to eventually get it out of there. Dinkins. Lobs it up for Mitchell. Williams thought about a three. Pelesi pumps. Backs down Ziegler. Spins to the outside. No good on the shot. And the rebound ended up getting tipped right to him. Yeah, St. Peter's, they tried to tip it out of the, out of the lane area away from Mitchell. Akpo for three. Well, St. Peter's, one of the first possessions where they didn't do a good job on the defensive glass, allowed two, three opportunities, and Akpo made him pay. Yeah, just the eighth three-pointer of the year for Bryce Akpo. Transferred from Clarendon Community College, started his career at Grand Canyon, and Williams off the steal gets fouled. And it'll head to the line when we come back from this timeout. 7.41 to go in the first. Canisius 
you you said it as we were going to break. It's like chipping away, chipping away. They you know they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole, but now they've got to just get some stops and work to get back in this, and they have in the last couple minutes. And you're right. It's been a lot for Devin Williams. He's got three points now. A couple of big defensive plays. Two for two from the line for Williams. And another player is Williams who can really assume some of that scoring load that the that the Griffs need picked mm -hmm. up. He's only averaging three and a half points per game this season, but just about eight points per game in his last three. So he's been taking on a bigger role in stepping up. Roberts from the free throw line gets the kiss. Well, nice screen and and pop pick and pop by Roberts there and and Reed did a nice job of recognizing or excuse me Bland did a nice job of recognizing and getting the ball to him Peacox in front by seven and an offensive foul on Trey Dinkins legal screen of the junior from Chester Pennsylvania well, you know, the uh, the media timeout came at a really good time for Bashir Mason. And you could see back-to-back -back possessions. You know, they've really, you know, tightened it up defensively. Stefan Roberts back out there after he had the bucket. Got the start, was doing a nice job on Mitchell. Foul away from the ball, and Pelesi is not happy with that call going against him. Just... Had his hands out by his side and was like, ah, come on. Well, and it's good recognition by Corey Washington. You know, he has about four inches on Pelesi, and he really now is thinking about posting him and taking him down to the block. And that's a tough, you know, defensive assignment for Cam Pelesi down on the block against Corey Washington. Washington with 12 points. First of the one and one is good for him. Boy, Corey Washington, we talk about Frank Mitchell being a, a Mac Player of the Year candidate. I think Corey Washington, with what he's done this year, is, is certainly putting himself in that conversation also. Obviously a lot, a lot of time to go between now and March. Um, but I think, I think if you're looking at two guys in this game who are going to be in that conversation, Mitchell, Washington, the, the, the two big ones. Well, and Corey Washington, you know, the last time... That, that I saw St. Peter's here, you know, it was about a month ago, and he's almost like a totally different player. You see the maturation process for Washington, and he really has made a difference as this team has grown. Mitchell feeds Williams, stripped to the ball. Washington gets the rebound. It is off to the races, coast to coast for Washington, but couldn't finish. Now uh, Washington just not able to use the window. Didn't have a great angle. Tried to make that layup straight over the top of the basket. Williams for three. Got it. Devin Williams with seven off the bench for Canisius. And that young man is definitely trying to keep his team in this game in the first half. Short corner two, no good. Now it's Randolph who had it for St. Peter's first time. We've seen the junior transfer from Richmond in today's game. Joe, Roy Clark has great vision. You see it every time he has the basketball. Eyes up, looking to find players in a position where they can really succeed. Bland, no good at the end of the shot clock. And then Roberts commits the foul on Mitchell. A little extra bump. From Stefan, that'll be his second foul. Foul seven on St. Peter's, so it'll be a one and one for Frank Mitchell here. Well, uh, you see Mitchell, you know, wasn't a great box out, but it was just enough that he was able to get his body between Roberts and the basket. And then Roberts just went right through him. Mitchell has really, as as we we've talked about, as much as he's dealt some physical blows, man, he's really received it from So and from Roberts here in the first half. And Mitchell, big guy, 6'8", 240, had to sit out last year due to transfer rules, which is a, a phrase that doesn't get used a whole lot these days. Transferred from Humber College in Toronto to the United States. And he has been an absolute monster 
for this Golden Griffins team. Two for two at the line. And that's been one of the weak parts in his in his game this year. He's 45 percent. Oh, those were two pretty good confident strokes from mm -hmm. the line right there. All of a sudden, it's a four-point game. Ziegler for three. That's a huge shot for St. Peter's. And you took the words right out of my mouth. I was almost about to say it. I was going to say, well, you know, here we go. I look, looky here. Canisius is only down four. Big three-point basket by Ziegler. Mitchell backing down inside. No good, but he got fouled by Muhammad So. And Mitchell going to go right back to the free throw line for two. Boy, he is just such a tough guard down on the block. And he was able that time to really get his shoulders turned and almost made that baby hook as it rattled in and out. Hasn't really gotten off yet here in the first uh, in the first 15 minutes. No good on the first free throw. Yeah, Mitchell, four points so far, but six rebounds. Pretty good. It's 17 last time out yeah. on Friday night yeah. against Iona. It's the second. Peacox in front by six. So to Washington. Look at it drive, spins inside, left it short, and Dinkins the rebound. Dinkins for three! What a shot by Trey Dinkins! Wow, Dinkins does a great job of securing that rebound and goes right to the three, top of the three-point stripe and knocks down a big shot. Canisius only down three. Bland sends it inside for Clark. One-on-one -on -one with Dinkins. Makes his move to the inside. Couldn't finish. Now, Trey Dinkins doing it on both ends of the floor. Made it very difficult for Roy Clark. Dinkins for the tie. How did he do it? What a shot by Trey Dinkins. With three hands in his face. Now, we... Also, if anyone is watching this in the arena and he got some scotch tape, there's kids with a sign that looked like it needed some help there. <laughs> and tape, tape the bottom of that up. Ziegler. Washington pulls up for the baseline and sinks it. 16 first half points for Corey Washington and St. Peter's back in front. And you know, great players make great plays. Out of a timeout, his team lost the lead. They needed a basket. Washington answers. And Latrell Reed back out there for St. Peter's out of the timeout as well. He's sat on the bench for a long time. Only played five minutes because of early foul trouble. Looks like 3-2 zone out of the timeout for St. Peter's. Out of an unusual look. Don't see St. Peter's play too much of that. Williams. For the mid-range, he's got nine. Uh, Williams did a nice job. Gap in that open area on that weak side and was able to hit a little baby floater left-handed to not the score at 33. Washington to Ziegler. Boy, Canisius just playing really tight perimeter defense. Reed drives, dishes Ziegler for three, little short. So gets the rebound though. Well, St. Peter's just their third offensive rebound today. They're third in the conference in offensive rebounding this season. Nation's done a good job of the glass against them. Bland, a deep three. Oh, Brent Bland has 11. A great ball reversal by Latrell Reed as you see 2 2 1 full court pressure after that made basket. Peacocks in front by three. Inside two minutes to go in the first half. Williams. Playing catch with Dinkins. Over the top for Mitchell, but the pass couldn't be corralled. Well, and you know, Coach Mason is getting what he had hoped for by the switch to zone. Canisius has become very stationary on offense the last two trips. And 
in that last pass tried to force it inside to Frank Mitchell. Reed. Bland gonna try another no good on the heat check. And I don't know if you saw it, but Latrell Reed kind of gave Brent Bland the little hand like, hey man, let's easy with the long range threes. Dinkins the miss. Akpo misses the dunk, but a foul called on Muhammad So. Now St. Peter's just not doing a good job there rebounding, giving Canisius another opportunity. But it was very evident Latrell Reed giving that hand gesture to Brent Bland saying, hey, come on. We can get that shot anytime in the possession. Let's try to work for something better. Canisius now plus five in rebounding today. Akpo hits the first free throw. St. Peter's on the season is, is plus three and a half in rebounding. Not a lot of teams have, have beaten them on the glass, but Canisius, especially among MAC teams, one of the few that, that has the size, the athleticism, and the strength of the St. Peter's bigs to, to kind of match and the depth. And you're seeing that, that it's it's been pretty much a wash in the first 19 minutes of this game. One point lead for the Peacocks right ahead of halftime. Lands. Peacocks have the ability to go two for one. Ziegler. Spins, tries to work his way inside and travel. And you could just see it that Ziegler, as he was making that move, was getting way ahead of himself, and that turnover was almost inevitable. But a, but a lot of it was due to the really good perimeter defense played by the Griffs. Williams off the fast break through the press break. Had it rejected, and Mitchell gets the put back. Oh, Mitchell there. You saw the tenacity and ferocity getting that rebound and then just, just forcing his way to the other side of the rim for the layup. Canisius with the lead. One-point advantage for the Golden Griffins. Clark for So. Throws it up. Not a good shot. So can hit threes, but, but that wasn't the time. Dinkins, good if it goes, no good, almost went. And that'll be the end of the first half here at Run Baby Run Arena. The Canisius Golden Griffins in front, 37-30, right at the end of the first, with just 25 seconds left to go. They get it first to start the second, and a chance for them to exhale at halftime and, and try to take this one to end what's been a, a really rough stretch for them over the last few weeks. And out of the uh, halftime, again, St. Peter's playing that 3-2 zone. But Fritz was able to get the left-handed layup. First two points for Yori Fritz today. Only played four minutes in the first half. So weave action up top for St. Peter's. Here's Latrell Reed. Out for Brent Bland. Three on the way. Off the mark. And Pelesi gets the rebound. Well, you know... Bland, oh, good look inside to Mitchell. Bland, you know, I'm, I'm sure at some point, you know, you, you may want to just put your arm around him and say, hey, son, you know, like, slow down with taking all the threes. We got we to gotta attack the basket. Mitchell. It's off to Dinkins. And an offensive foul away from the ball. It's going to be Mitchell picking it up. He's fighting with Roberts in the corner. Yeah, it might have been moving on the screen. Trying to set that down screen to pop Dinkins to the ball side wing. Wasn't set. Good call by the official. Read off the screen from Roberts to Washington. Top of the key, no good. Rebound pops over to Mitchell. He's got nine boards today. Dinkins off balance. Oh, he got it, but a basket interference call. Touched inside the cylinder. No basket going the other way. 
Joe, if we look back from the last couple of possessions of the first half to the first couple of positions, as you see Dinkins going hard to the basket, but the ball was still on the cylinder when Mitchell touched it. But the last few possessions of the first half and here to start the second half, St. Peter's just so settling for perimeter jump shots. When they were at their best in the first 20 minutes, they were getting things going to the basket. Roberts over to Ziegler. Three-point lead for Canisius. Inside to Roberts, backing Mitchell down. Washington pumps. Nowhere to go on the drive. Corner two, no good. Another long jumper for St. Peter's. And Mitchell did a super job of jumping out on Washington. Really altered his shot. Britt sets the screen for Gadsden, who is quiet. And a foul is going to go against Brent Bland. Just ran Fritz over. Trying to hedge the screen. Yeah, Bland wasn't sure if he was going to go under or over that screen, and he ended up going through it to pick up that foul. Pelesi. Tipped. Nearly taken away by Ziegler, but they recover. Now Fritz inside. No good. And off his leg out of bounds, going after the rebound. Well, Stefan Roberts came over and really defended Fritz extremely well, altering the shot. Let's see if St. Peter's, again, can try and get something going to the basket on this possession. Reed driving, sends the pass. Ziegler, open look, it's good. So the difference there is it's not just a perimeter jump shot. It starts with the drive. And then the kick out. Ziegler's in rhythm, knocks it down. Inside out basketball for the Peacocks as it tied at 39. Mitchell to Fritz. Gadsden drives into Washington and an offensive foul. Now, Corey Washington does a nice job of beating Gadsden to the spot. He goes right to the baseline, takes it away. That'll be the first foul on Gadsden. Boy, just a great job to get to the spot. You don't see a lot of charges taken that far out in that location. That's a great point, and... He really slid effectively well right to the baseline. Washington one-on-one -on -one with Fritz. Reed to Bland at the rim. Good cut for Brent Bland and was wide open. Now, good recognition by Reed. Solid cut by Bland for the layup. Fritz, layup, no good. And the rebound for the Peacocks and a foul against Canisius. Roberts a little shaken up afterward, but it's helped up pretty quickly. Well, Stefan Roberts had a very quiet first half, but making some plays here in the second half on the defensive end does a nice job of really bodying up Fritz on the layup attempt and then was able to really secure that rebound. Good, good, solid interior play. St. Peter's leading by two. On a 5-0 spurt with Roy Clark checked in. Reed puts it on the floor, looks to attack, has it blocked by Mitchell. Uh, Frank Mitchell just said no, no, no. Was able to stand his ground to block that shot. Griffin's moving the ball well offensively. Mitchell backing it down on Roberts inside. Nice move, but couldn't finish. Reed gets the rebound and is off to the races. Clark with a good look. Williams the miss. Mitchell. Botch the handoff with Dinkins and it'll be St. Peter's basketball timeout, or rather, yeah, timeout on the floor after the 
tenth turnover. You make friends. I was I was a Boy Scout back in the day, Jr. Yep. And you know the motto is always be prepared. And I usually during baseball season have tape on me at all times because you never know. Uh, but during basketball, I don't. Sorry, kid. <laughs> Roberts, wheels underneath to Washington. No good at the rim. And it'll stay with the Peacocks. Akpo, Gadsden converge to really make it tough for Corey Washington to finish at the rim. And that's a play that St. Peter's has run out of the timeout already today. Roberts wheeling underneath for Washington. Bland for three, buries it. Career high 16 for Brent Bland. Brent Bland has really had confident strokes from the perimeter all day today and knocking down another big three. Redshirt sophomore took his redshirt year in 21-22 during the Elite Eight run for St. Peter's. He was right there. And a foul going after the rebound is going to go against the Peacocks. That be Bland picking up his second. But he was one of those guys that he had the front row seat to the whole thing just because of the COVID year, guys getting the extra year. There just wasn't, wasn't going to be playing time for him, so took the red shirt. And he's been really excellent this season. Reed inside to Roberts. Blocked from behind by Mitchell. Mitchell, super blocked shot. Dinkins drops underneath to Gadsden who missed the dunk, but he was fouled. And will head to the line for two. Foul on Stefan Roberts is his third. TJ Gadsden being rewarded by running the break. Trey Dinkins finding Gadsden as he was flying down that, that wing. Almost was able to throw it down. You know, see Dinkins leading the break and Gadsden just keep running. And he'll find you. Good catch. Tough pass to catch while the big man was moving. First free throw for Gadsden goes. That's Canisius' first points in five and a half minutes. And a lot of near misses, Joe. You know, it's not like they've played really bad offensive basketball. Just not putting it in the hole. Second goes down, so two for two for T.J. Gadsden. He averages nine points a game. He's got four right now. St. Peter's with a three-point lead over Canisius. Latrell Reed with just two points today, but five assists. Washington trying to drive through two and gets fouled. Almost lost the handle, did Corey Washington, as he was going through the lane. There's also like a little hesitation move as he was trying to get in into the lane, a little shimmy move. We're in it. We're we're getting into this uh, a key stretch here, you know, about coming up on uh, you know 13 minutes remaining in the game. See if St. Peter's can extend this lead. Boy, that's a good start. Corey Washington's first point to the second half. Straight away three, puts the Peacocks up six. And Washington all day has been such a big offensive player. Knocked down a big time three ball there. Reed tips the pass. Here come the Peacocks. Washington up ahead to the rim. Timeout, Canisius. Now back to back buckets by Washington. Extend that lead run and what was once you know a close game is now a St. Peter's 8 point lead 2-2-1 two, two, out of the timeout pass nearly taken away in the press Canisius got to get it across and they just do ahead of a 10 count Gadsden baseline drive dumps off to Akpo who gets fouled hit on the arm by Brent Bland on the way up and so Bryce Akpo to the free throw line and Boy, Canisius, after they were really good at the stripe in the first half, a chance here at this juncture to, to try to get themselves righted offensively by making some free throws. And 
both teams need that understanding of attacking the basket. Good things happen for each team when they do, and it opens up perimeter play. And Akpo, just like Gadsden was the possession before, two possessions before, run the floor. Run the floor. You're going to get rewarded. Akpo misses both ends. St. Peter's been doing a good job of sharing the basketball today. 18 field goals and 16 assists. Clark out for Ziegler. Thought about it. Drives back for Clark underneath who gets the bucket. There's another assist. This time Armani Ziegler. Great recognition, recognition by Ziegler. And Clark in traffic, good finish. Williams. Canisius find themselves down by 10 for the first time since the first half. And a one point lead at halftime. Akpo, get on his way in, draws a foul. This time Muhammad so the guilty party, that'll be his third. So now both him and Stefan Roberts and Brent Bland have three fouls for St. Peter's. And a lot of time left in this contest, over 12 minutes remaining, and you're right, the fouls starting to tally up for, for the Peacocks. So Akpo at the line trying to redeem himself after the 0 for 2 his last trip. It's that one as Akpo this year, 38% from the free throw line. Mentioned earlier, started his collegiate career at Grand Canyon, playing for Bryce Drew for a couple of years. Started as a freshman, then came off the bench, hit the portal, and has ended up at Canisius now for the last two years. He's been a solid role player for Reggie Witherspoon. Eight point lead for St. Peter's. Clark against Williams. Eight to shoot. Clark. Nifty move off the mark of the three, and Police uh, Pelesi gets the rebound. Now, just a lot of individual effort there by Clark. I would rather see the ball move more on the offensive end. Mitchell draws a foul going up inside. We'll head to the line for a couple on the other side of this timeout with 11.42 left to go in the second. Together, and Bashir Mason has done a tremendous job, you know, inheriting a program from Shaheen Holloway mm -hmm. and really keeping it moving. And right now, they are one of the best teams in the MAC. Mitchell makes good on the first free throw. He's up to eight. By the way, that 87-88 team that started 6-0 in the MAC ended up going 11-3, finishing in second place that year behind... LaSalle, who went 14-0 in the MAC and had three future NBA players on it. I, I was going to say, is that a Lionel Simmons uh, LaSalle team? It, it sure is. It's a Lionel Simmons, Tim Legler, yep. Doug Overton LaSalle yeah. team. Speedy Morris yep. uh, head coach. At one of his MAC coach of the years. Coaches of the year? Yeah. Coach of the years. Haven't had an undefeated MAC season in a long time and I mean, playing 20 conference games, it's probably not going to happen for a while either. So hard, so hard to run the table. I mean, just look at Iona the last couple of years, right? There's such good teams. Head to the shot clock. Washington had it blocked. Dinkins not free from Ziegler. And then a foul called going after it. Oh, man, Reggie Weatherspoon is so mm -hmm. upset with his guys trying to, you know, really motivate his team to get him back. You know, ball was loose on the floor. Come on, man. You got one guy getting getting killed. You got to help your teammate. I love to see that when coaches, you know, really 
really want to spur their team on. And, and that's what Coach Witherspoon was doing. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get his guys to understand, hey, we got 10 minutes left, gang. We got to get after it right now. And Reggie, one of the best coaches around in college basketball, a guy who probably doesn't get his due a whole lot as Williams misses the first free throw, but 14 years as the head coach at Buffalo, 99 through 2013. Been with Kenesha since 2016, sitting on 299 career wins in the NCAA, but has also been a head coach at the junior college level at Erie Community College. Saw them through to a lot of success. Great player in his own right. Played under Jim O'Brien and John Beeline when he was in college. Two pretty good guys yep. to learn from. Yep. Well, and it's it's evident, you know, he's got the ear of his team. Mm -hmm. His team, they 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 play hard and they're listening. You can tell that they're trying, really, whatever whatever he wants them to do, they're really trying to put it and make it come to fruition. Dinkins, no good on the three-pointer. Bland fighting for the rebound with Pelesi, and it goes out of bounds. And, you know, I think this day and age in college basketball, there's there's two things that really stand out to me about the job that Reggie Witherspoon has done at Canisius. One of them is that they only lost one player to the transfer portal last year, and that was a, a senior who graduated and then grad transferred, Jaco Fritz, off to Hofstra, older brother of Yori Fritz, who's on the Canisius team now. So guys are staying at Canisius to play for Reggie Witherspoon. And also the job that he did during the COVID year in 2021, they only went seven and six, but they were dealing with a lot of different problems throughout the year, as a lot of teams were. And they were playing hard. They won some really good games. And, you know, while the record might not reflect it, might have been one of the best coaching jobs in the conference that year was what Reggie was able to do at Canisius. Well, and I think the fact of, of your point regarding the transfer portal in this day and age, that's a that's a big benchmark. Mm -hmm. The kids stay. Especially in a conference like the MAC that has become kind of a transitional league the last few years where guys come in, they come out, uh, maybe even a little bit more than in some other leagues. It, it, it shows how much these players like playing for Reggie Witherspoon and, and that they want to continue totally. to be able to, to keep doing that. Uh, it's a credit to him, his staff, all the all the administrators and support staff at Canisius that these kids want to stay there and, and play. And, and it was interesting because Jerry Carino, one of the best college basketball writers in New Jersey this week, published a, a nice feature on Latrell Reed that kind of spoke to a lot of those same things with regard to Bashir Mason and St. Peter's. Williams for three, buries it. Big shot for Canisius as Williams up to 12. And Dinkins, Trey Dinkins really makes that play. Good jump stop, two foot jump stop in the lane and a kick out pass for the wide open three by Williams. But in that article, Reed is, is quoted as saying that you know when Bashir Mason had his introductory press conference at St. Peter's, his entire team from Wagner came out to support him. And that really showed Latrell and some of the other players on this. Like, you know what? If his team is willing to do that for him, I, I think, yeah, I, I want to make sure I give him a chance and and stay here at St. Peter's. And that's that's been a relationship that's really borne a lot of fruit for both Bashir Mason and for Latrell Reed. And you know, you know, when we when people hear Division One, they think the Power Five conferences, mm -hmm. but schools in the MAC, the NEC, these smaller leagues, these kids. They work so hard, and the relationships that are forged between player and coach are just as strong as what people see on big-time national TV. Roberts blocked by Mitchell. Goes right back up and can't get it. And then called for going over the back, and Mitchell steps over him. As temperature is starting to, to flare up again, St. Peter's pleading that there should be a foul on Mitchell. I don't think there was a foul called. It's just out of bounds. Yeah, no, there was there was no foul called. The ball oh. just went out of bounds. It should have been a foul, yeah. quite frankly, on Stefan Roberts. As Mitchell did a terrific job of boxing out. Akpo to Mitchell underneath. 
Right back. Good ball movement. Roberts comes over and mauls Akpo. Boy, those three guys down low. Super job. Gadsden, Akpo, and Mitchell. Great interior pass down the stretch. Akpo hits his first free throw. Now in double figures today for Canisius. Joining Dinkins and Williams. And 21 points for Corey Washington today to lead the way for St. Peter's. No good. Washington gets the rebound for the Peacocks. It was guarded by Akpo. A bit of a mismatch outside. Here's Clark. Ziegler for three. No good. Washington fights through two players and gets the rebound. A foul called against Akpo going after it with Washington. Uh, really good job by Canisius perimeter defense. St. Peter's was very stagnant. They really didn't do much, but credit Corey Washington and his tenacity to try to get that offensive rebound. Ziegler. With Clark, So, Reed, and Washington out there. Tipped into the backcourt. Reed hustling after it. Comes up with the possession. Ziegler. Take it away. Williams read it perfectly and then a tie up. Possession arrow favors the Peacocks. Oh, great job by Ziegler to get in there and tie up Williams. You know, fast and furious as you see Clark, you know, lose the basketball. Watch Reed here smartly allow the ball to stay on the floor so that he didn't travel. But then Ziegler, after he gets it stripped, he gets in there and ties up Williams. Crazy sequence. So it'll be 20 on the shot clock. A couple big hustle plays for St. Peter's. Just getting everyone set up. Devin Williams get a little further away from the line. Yep. Reed driving. Gets the way up. And there was Latrell Reed. The veteran presence going to the hole. Strong finish. Seven point Peacock advantage. Getting loud inside the Anatelli Center. Dinkins driving with the left. Tipped and stolen. Ziegler had the play and a foul on the backcourt on Williams with Reed moving ahead in transition. Well, the defense, big time defensive pressure by Bashir Mason's club, forcing turnovers. And Latrell Reed, who has been more of a facilitator today than a scorer, right now, big drive in a bucket, goes to the line here for one and one. And uncharacteristically missed the first. Reed, four points, seven assists in just 20 minutes today. Remember, he only played about five minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. Been out there almost the entire second half. Mitchell backing down on So. Tough take, no good. So fights for the rebound. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by Mitchell. And you know, Joe, So and Roberts when the ball has gone in to Frank Mitchell today, have been fantastic because they've guarded him with very little help. Tremendous interior defense by those two guys today. Good movement underneath for So, and a foul called on Canisius. And this is a tough foul to go against Devin Williams. He really slid over and helped on that pass inside. You watch him come over here, great look, and so gets stripped. Looks like he got a lot of the basketball. Tough call against Williams. 
So at the line to shoot to Mohamed So. So with no points today, 71% from the line this year, and that rims out. Boy, St. Peter's one of the better free throw shooting teams in the MAC at 74% this year. Top 75 in the nation also, but missing a couple free throws in a row. Second, goes down. And those are big misses because they could have really stretched this lead even more so than what they have. Mm -hmm. Eight point lead for St. Peter's. Inside six minutes left to play here in Jersey City. Gadsden drives so with the defense. And this pressure is not forcing turnovers, but mm -hmm. what it's doing is it's kind of altering and slowing down Canisius' rhythm on offense, although in that trip, they broke it very easily. We got an off the ball foul. Yeah, before it was even inbounded, Roy Clark gets called for the ninth St. Peter's foul of the half, and so one and one for Canisius as Clark picks up his second. Devin Williams gonna go to the line for two. Williams, two of three from the stripe today. And getting to the free throw line has not been something Devin Williams has done a ton this season. He was seven of 10 on the year coming into today. Seen his minutes go up and his opportunities go up also. And that's a great point. And I was just going to say that, you know, this is a young man who is really taking advantage of an opportunity today. As you just mentioned, this is not, this is not someone that's seen these kinds of minutes nor this kind of opportunity from Reggie Witherspoon this year. But man, is he taking advantage of his opportunity today. Career high, 13 points for Devin Williams in 24 minutes. He played 23 minutes Friday against Iona. That was his previous season high. So already at a season high in terms of minutes for Williams today. And why not keep him out there? He has been great. Washington rejected so the second chance, and one for Mohamed So. That might be Mohamed So biggest basket of this season. Just able to get it in the interior off a miss, kind of blocked, and look at So going and getting it, and the finish. So now a chance for a three-point play to put St. Peter's up by 10. And this after Canisius had really cut it down. Can't hit the free throw, so that's three misses from the line out of four attempts in the second half for St. Peter's. It stays a nine-point lead. St. Peter's stays in the 3-2. Dropped underneath, defensively so with the play, read the rebound. And off to the races, Washington. Tough take. Corey Washington, a walking bucket. Timeout, Canisius. And an 11 point lead for St. Peter's with 4.48 to go. Getting to the basket, doing just a solid job for the Peacocks. 11 point lead for St. Peter's, one off their biggest lead of the game. Do the Griffs have another run in that? If they do, they're going to have to find it fast. Yeah, and I think this this pressure and what it does in, in reducing the shot clock makes it really tough for the Griffins to find rhythm offensively. Mitchell gave it back. Williams to the rack. Oh, and there's our guy Devin Williams again. Able to get right through the lane and to the bucket for the finish. And that's a big basket for Canisius. All right, Devin Williams before today only had two double-figure scoring games of the year. He had 12 against Division II to Uville, and then Friday against Iona. Where he had 10. Pass from Reed just kept in. Out for a Washington three. No good. Now, tough pass there by Latrell Reed. St. Peter's lucky to even get a shot attempt off there. Mitchell 
One on one with So underneath. Looks to curl around him, couldn't get it. So gets the rebound and a foul on Bryce Okpo. Knocked down Brent Bland and that'll send us to another timeout on the floor as Okpo, a two games already final in the MAC today. Niagara beats Mount St. Mary's 82-71. So Niagara now five and three. As Brent Bland misses the first of two free throws. Fairfield with a big win in Riverdale today, 82-75 over Manhattan. So Fairfield now 6-2. Bland hits the second, he's up to 19 points. Iona has a one-point lead over Quinnipiac with a minute 15 to go in Connecticut. Marist a one-point lead over Siena with 2.51 to go in Poughkeepsie. Reed off the steal from Washington. The slam for Latrell Reed, elevating. And that's the first steal turnover off this pressure, and it, it couldn't have come at a worse time for Canisius. 12-point lead for St. Peter's, tied for their largest of the game. I was way back in the first half when they were up 24-12. Dinkins has been really quiet in the second half. Pelesi driving, bumped by Bland on the way up. He'll head to the line for two as Bland's going to pick up his fourth foul. And that's and that's a really, really good move by Cam Pelesi. As he, as he flashed to the basketball in the vulnerability against that zone right around the high post area and was able to patiently make his move, drawing that contact by Bland. Just upset with himself that he didn't finish and try to get a three-point play. Pelesi short on the free throw. He's a 70% foul shooter. And that's an area where Canisius has really struggled this year. Just 64% as a team from the line. Normally, Reggie Witherspoon's teams have been much better from the line than Canisius has been this season. Plessy gets the second. He's got one point today. Eleven point St. Peter's lead. Trying to take some time off the clock this possession. Eight to shoot. So backing down Mitchell. Reed back to So for a 15 footer. Good trip defensively again by Canisius. Forced a tough shot. Pelesi out for Williams. He's been the man, and it's blocked by Washington. What a whistle and a foul. The lead against Washington. Yep, that'll be his third. Yeah, I think he got Williams on the arm as Williams went to elevate to the rim. St. Peter's really extending that zone very wide on the perimeter, stretching it sideline to sideline, not really allowing any good three-point looks at the basket, almost daring Canisius to try to get inside and go to the basket. for two from Williams and Canisius able to get a timeout in as Pelesi was rolling down was able to take the timeout without getting top Canisius basketball 19 on the shot clock and just thrown right to Stefan Roberts Washington on the run no good boy that was Rough and Washington shaken up under the basket the other way. Five on four for the Golden Griffins. Gadsden for three, no good. And a foul. Nope, just rebound out of bounds. Pardon. Saw Bland go down, wasn't sure with that whistle, but just the indication, Canisius basketball. Now, tough, tough break for St. Peter's. Get out and play solid defense. You're in every game when you do that. Here's Dinkins. Pulls up from the elbow, no good. Offensive rebound for Frank Mitchell. Goes up, he can't get it. And St. Peter's secures the second chance miss. Once again, Stefan Roberts really making it tough for Mitchell 
and a lot of good team rebounding by St. Peter's, allowing for them to secure it, and Reed will go to the line, and it's starting to look bleak for the Griffins. 11-point St. Peter's lead, and the Peacocks just trying to seal this one up from the free throw line. They've struggled, though, from the line in the second half. A well, friendly roll for Latrell Reed. It's up to seven points today, along with eight assists. Another really, really solid game for Latrell Reed. Two for two at the line. Peacocks, their largest lead of the game at plus 13. What a great job closing out Canisius today after they went on a run in the middle of this second half, JR. It's been all St. Peter's since. Yep, just a great defensive second half. Palessi gets the foul and one. Boy, that was tough. Yeah, he absorbed that contact by Roberts. Kind of threw up a little bit of a prayer, but it was includes the bucket that Palessi just had. That is just stifling defense for St. Peter's after halftime. Well, and not only the fact that they're four of 19, but in almost 19 minutes of play, only 19 f field goal attempts. Yeah. That's just stifling defense. St. Peter's 11 of 31 from the floor in that time. They, they've had 12 more field goal attempts. Uh, wow. Tough foul to go against Canisius there. Yeah, so Corey Washington going to go to the line. St. Peter's in the double bonus. Now uh, They almost were able to get that double team and force the turnover as Washington really was trapped on the sideline and and the baseline kind of got bailed out by the by the officials call got on the first for Washington he's up to 24 points season and career higher 26 did that against Kane Back in December, a Division Three school locally here in New Jersey. Coming out of the finals break. Pump fake, drive for Gadsden. Righty finger roll is good. Nice play there for TJ Gadsden. Clark getting doubled, lost the handle. Kenny just gets the turnover. Nine point game, 45 seconds to go. Dinkins driving to the rim, no good. Offensive board to put back for Gadsden. Here comes Canisius. Uh, Not good. over yet. And give this team credit, never say die. 66-59, a foul on Canisius. And Joe, you know what I liked uh, on that trip by Canisius? Even though they were down by nine points, they didn't just take a really bad three. They went and they attacked the glass and, and got an easy bucket. And you know what? That's that could keep them in, in this game. Don't don't think you gotta shoot long range. Go and get the easy two point baskets. Reed gets the bucket. Yeah, at a certain point, you, you gotta kinda just look at it from like, look, we we need points and we need them fast. So whatever's the, the path of least resistance get that and then you can worry about playing for all right we need a three here we don't need a three here once you close the gap a little bit exactly and you're right there's going to come a point where they're going to have to shoot threes but it wasn't there at that moment and there's a big turnover after the buckets made at the line by Latrell Reed he's intentionally found by Ganston and that'll send Reed right back to the line talked about how he was Having a little bit of a down scoring game. He's now up to 10 points and a chance to tack on some more. A real heady kind of a game by him today, knowing what his team needed. And you're right. He could have kind of, you know, went in the tank a little bit after the early fouls, mm -hmm. but that's not the kind of player that he is. He was a, a this is a smart leadership type of a game from Latrell Reed today. Two for two at the line, up to a dozen points. The eight assists that we talked about already, St. Peter's with an 11-point lead over Canisius, 28 seconds to go.
Those are four really big free throws for Latrell Reed. Yeah, and that kind of, you know, just really signifies the, the type of player that he is and the and the maturation that that he's had. Dinkins driving right at so left it short. Perkins the rebound. Bland trying to fight through the press. And able to do so without being fouled. Canisius will back off. And St. Peter's is going to do it. A 70-59 to win over the Canisius Golden Griffins today. A hard-fought emotional contest. And St. Peter's is 6-1. and